Hi, my name is Rachel, and I'm a theater person. I've worked and lived everywhere across the country, acting, singing, directing, and even cleaning toilets. I moved to Harrisburg two years ago to work at Open Stage, a professional theater company that's been around going on 35 years. During this time of social distancing, we had some time to reflect on what it means to be a performer with no audience to perform for. As always, we hope to make lemonade from lemons and take time to reflect on the phenomenal artists that have become such an important part of our local culture and our community. This is Thank You 10. Oh, crazy days, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. <laughs> I want to uh, welcome our very special guest, Clark Nicholson, uh, who uh, is one of the founders of Gamut Theater, uh, one of our neighboring theaters, just about uh, two blocks away from open stage. Hi, Clark. Hello. What made you start a theater company? <laughs> well, we, we had worked for a lot of different theater companies, um, some, some good ones, uh, some not as good. Uh, <laughs> but we learned a lot from, from, from all of those experiences. And while we were dating, even before we uh, decided to get married, we sort of became business partners, Melissa and I. And uh, we started talking about what we wanted to uh, make so we could form a life around it. and. Uh, what it was is we wanted to continue to do theater. We loved that and stopping that was not an option, but we wanted to figure out where we could have a home base to do that. We came up with the name Gamut uh, because it's in, um, you know, it's, it's mentioned in Shakespeare's Taming of the Shrew, uh, Gamut I Am, the root of all accord, which is the musical scale from the lowest note to the highest note. Um, and uh, it wasn't that we were a, a musical company per se, but we, uh, we we did do a lot of different things. We did, a, you know, we did children's theater, we did classical theater, we did improv comedy, things like that. So I thought, well, let's get a name that has to do with doing a lot, a range of things. So that's where I came up with the name Gamut. Plus, I just like to say I run the Gamut. So. <laughs> Y'all actually worked out of Strawberry Square. Is that where you started? Yeah, we did. So uh, they were, Strawberry Square was very, very helpful in, in establishing what later became Gamut because they took a chance on us. We, we didn't have any money for rent and they said, look, we have a bunch of empty spaces, but what we'll do is um, we'll work out a thing with you where you can produce regularly. You can't modify this space, but it's a nice space you produce regularly and you give us per percentage of what you make. And, you know, some weeks that was 40 bucks, you know, and, and we'd give them 20% of that, you know, they give them their eight bucks. So eventually uh, our situation with Strawberry Square was getting to a point where we loved them, but the, they were not gainfully renting that space at the amount of money that they needed to then at that time uh brad jones had come in as ceo at harristown over strawberry square and he came to us he said hey look i understand you're looking around i understand where you're looking around but there's a space right across the street from us that is uh that is empty and uh we want to make sure that it's used in a good way and uh would you be interested in having a look at that and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm pretty much sure that I want to move out of downtown Harrisburg, but let's go have a look at it. And we went in it and it just blew me away. And Melissa started crying <laughs> because she loved it so much. And uh, as we were showing the realtor and uh, Brad, who was walking around with us said, Melissa, you've got to be develop a better poker face. You're an actor and a director, a producer. Um, you, you're a theatrician, so you do it all. Um, but what is one of the projects that stuck out to you over the last 20 plus years that you've been able to work on here um, that, you, that, that sticks out in your mind as a special experience? Uh, I, I, I think the central thing, I, I won't talk about just one, but just the ongoing um, free Shakespeare in the Park that uh, we've been able to work on is uh, something that I um, 
it, 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 that is really magical, man. Every, every year it happens. Uh, just because it's, it's not just like a show. It, it's, it's really like the, the, this, this festival event, you know, that we, that we put our time into and we really kind of go and live out at Reservoir Park for a couple months and, uh, <laughs> You know, and we get to know folks from the neighborhood and uh, people from from all over come up to that park, which they did not do at all, you know, when we first came to town. As a matter of fact, that park was uh, abandoned when we first got to town. It was, really? uh, yeah, it was an overgrown field, man. Um, uh, there was nothing there except for some falling apart roads that people would drive up into uh, to go buy drugs. I mean, that was that was it. Yeah, it it was it was a crazy thing, man. The the, the first one, um, it was uh, it was pretty. I mean, all the rest have been something else, but that first one was legendary. Uh, the city had put a lot of money into making Reservoir Park nice again. They hadn't made the the playground that's down there now. You know the playground. Yeah. And uh, that had to be really really terraformed. So they said uh, we're gonna have to dig out a, hum a whole bunch of dirt over here. And so I was watching them do it, and I was trying to do Midsummer Night's Dream with no budget. And so I said, uh, hey, could you get that bulldozer to take this dirt over to the bandshell? And they said, sure. So I got uh, 22 tons of dirt, um, and we put it up on the bandshell. And uh, this is before we had the thrust stage, and we built uh, a junkyard. We came up with a couple hundred dollars for the entire budget, and we used that to make a, a black curtain. That covered the entire um, proscenium of the band show. That was Athens at the beginning, and so we were there, and uh, we brought out our stereo system, and we used a lot of you know alternative music from the time, and uh, it was the replacements. Anywhere is better than here. Was my was my song for um, for uh, leaving Athens and going out into the wilderness. And so as that happened, uh, you heard. Paul Westerberg just this scream ah and I always said that scream was the beginning of the Harrisburg Shakespeare Company. Is that you got to reprise your role as Puck uh, I think in 2018 summer of 2018? Yeah Tom Weaver talked me into that <laughs> 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 and uh, he said no I have this great idea and he said he, he Puck is is your age and he's I want it to reflect Harrisburg and uh and to be quite honest, our homeless population is a is, is a significant uh, portion of uh, our community. All the 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 references in the show to uh, "I am invisible," "We are invisible," um, are literally true when it comes down to, you know, a lot of these homeless people and things like that. So when I said "I am invisible," I walk through like a homeless person walks through, and everybody sort of ignores that. Um, okay, so you've done a ton of Shakespeare in your life. Um, over the years, have you developed a favorite Shakespearean curse word or insult? Yeah. Uh, splud. Splud. S apostrophe B L O O D exclamation point in every case. <laughs> it's short for by his blood, right? It's like a, it's like a blasphemous curse. Splud, you would face me? <laughs> Hey, you want to hear a Titus Andronicus story? Uh, more than anything, it's my favorite Shakespeare, actually. <laughs> so I was playing Titus, and uh, I had my. It was towards the end where you come out in the in the, in the chef's outfit and the whole deal to serve up the pie. Spoiler and, alert! Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, my hand was cut off, so it was all bound up, and so I'm getting ready to go out. And Abby Van Andel, who plays my daughter Lavinia, comes running around the corner. And her dresser wasn't there to get her ready to go on. And so she comes running around with her veil that she has to wear between her two stumps because her hands are both cut off. So her veil is between her hands. And she comes running. We're about to make an interest. She's like, can you help me? Can you help me? I, I don't have any hands and I have to put this on. And I said, I only have one. And so with three stumps, <laughs> she got the veil on her head. Boom boost and pushed her out on stage and we went and did it. It was fun. I've been asking everybody um, about the projects that they were working on before the world was canceled. So um, you were uh, playing 
one of the lead characters in Enemy of the People. Tell us a little bit about that show and why y'all decided to present it. It was actually quite bizarre and spooky as the weeks progressed because um, if you know Ibsen's Enemy of the People, it's about a public health crisis. Uh, and uh, the, the, there's a doctor, Dr. Stockman, who I was playing, who uh, argues this needs to be shut down or it's going to hurt and kill people. And, uh, and then everybody says, no, but it's going to affect the bottom line of the city. We can't shut it down. We can't shut it down. And so there's this great argument and this great soul searching about what do we do? Do we continue to uh, operate as we have or do we shut it down? And uh, my character advocated for the shutdown uh, very vociferously and ended up um, being attacked. And as the lights go down, probably uh, done away with by his community for trying to say, look, we've got to be responsible. We can't just look at um, profits we have to uh, protect uh, our community. So it was a, 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 a bizarre thing to be involved in when, when this was coming down. Uh, and when we were talking about whether we were gonna shut down, because we shut down right around when you guys did, uh, but it was, and everybody did within the next couple of days. But I just sat down with Melissa and I said, look, Melissa, I can't go out on stage and say these lines and say, we can't do this, there's a risk. I said, I can't, I can't get up there and yell and scream about personal responsibility if I think that we're not taking it. I mean, I, I would hope I would have felt the same way anyway, but the, the irony just got really, really, really thick, you know? And I, and I said, I, I just don't, I don't, I don't think I personally can do it. You know? So um, maybe we'll bring it back. <laughs> maybe I, I won't even want to talk about that when this is all over, I don't know. Um, one of the last things I'm asking everybody is, is how they can support the local arts. Specifically, how can people support Gamut Theater right now? Uh, yeah, the, we, we've been getting some donations and that's great. Um, we're, we're, we're really trying to... You want to go to GamutTheater.org? <laughs> GamutTheater.org <laughs> slash <laughs> donate. D-O-N-A-T-E. See, I knew that. And that's theater with an R-E. That's theater with an R-E. I don't know who that I was. That. It's... The looting has started. There's marauders in my house. <laughs> Did you saw that? Thank you so so much. Um, uh, I really hope that you get to remount Enemy of the People. But if not, I'm really excited to see what Gamut's going to do next. Um, I love your work. I love the work that uh, you do for the community. And um, I know that as an arts community, we're in this together. And um, I'm encourage everyone to go to gamuttheater.org. Um, and uh, look out for the next project that they're going to do because it's going to be amazing. Clark, thank you so much for doing this today. I can't wait to see you guys as well. We'll, we'll see you when this is over. We will. All right. Thanks so much, Clark. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon, hopefully outside of the virtual world. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Love you. Be good. Love you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I, Chris is crawling on the ground. Try you can interrupt. This is, <laughs> this is not going on the video. It's fine. Um, but <laughs> hey, Clark. Hi. I've got a. Hey, what's up, Gary? What's up, man? Just give me.